What's up, guys? We just saw the announcement from Nick on firmware 2.1 for the Z9, we just had 2.0 about a month or so ago, and people were saying that was like version two of the Z9, and that camera's only been out for a few months, and here we are with the 2.1. Because Nikon said, wait a second, we have more to improve on this camera system, and we're listening to the photographers out there that are using it, sports photographers, concert photographers, wildlife photographers, and they're saying we can improve this camera, and they're doing so, and especially 2.1, which is primarily focused on autofocusing in AFC mode, and also high frequency flicker reduction for a lot of the concert and sporting photographers out there who need this. Does this firmware update address some of those issues? Let's talk about it right now. All right, before we kick things off, big thanks to Nikon Singapore for providing the Z9 and the firmware update in advance for review. Having said that, these are my thoughts and my thoughts only. Let's talk about high frequency flicker reduction first, because I think a lot a lot of sporting and concert photographers are going to appreciate this because those pesky LED signboards with sponsored logos on them and banners and all that stuff around the um, the arenas can be very frustrating for photographers out there that want to capture fast action, but at the same time dealing with high shutter speed, but also dealing with flicker. So how do you deal with both of these? Now there is an anti-flicker reduction setting in the Z9 already for video and for photography. However, that doesn't address all the issues that photographers are going to face. With high frequency flicker reduction, it actually allows you to fine tune the shutter speed to down to the exact number you want it to be. And that's that way you can actually reduce that flicker, capture the action that you need at the higher shutter speed without losing or compromising your image, which is the most important, especially when you do this for a living and you need that money shot for your editor or to publish it online. But it's very reminiscent of what I saw on the Alpha 1 when I tested that out a number of months back and that worked really well there. So I trust that Nikon has done their due diligence on this and it's gonna work equally as well for Z9 shooters in that regard. One of the cool things about this, you can bring down to one over 96 EV in this high frequency flicker reduction in that, and you can also assign it to a function button so you can access it right away. Turn it on and turn it off. I'll show you how it looks in the Atomus Ninja 5. I have it set to function two. I hit the button, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, and it's fine. No issues at all with that. Now, unfortunately, it is not for video at this time. That is something that I asked them if they could do that because case in point, these this LED lighting I have behind me on my uh, TerraVault display cabinet is not flicker free. So I really have to fine tune the shutter here while I'm doing video. Case in point, I'm one over 40 and I'm doing 4K 30. So technically I should be at one over 60. Even with anti-flicker reduction that I have set up in the camera, it's still gonna get some banding. So hopefully they will bring that in the future for videographers out there. Okay, next is continuous autofocus and improving that so it doesn't refocus on the background while you're trying to focus on a subject. Now I did see this happen to me in my 800 millimeter F6.3 VRS base Fresno element review. If you haven't seen that video, click here, but wait till after this video, of course. And there were times where we just focus on the background and I could not regain focus no matter what I did. This has been improved quite a bit. Now it's not 100%, but I will show you here from samples from the Atomus Ninja 5. I took a little uh, Batman Lego figurine and I put it here on a concrete uh, slab and I'm going back and forth in 3D tracking as I'm tracking left to right, up and down. And for the most part, it is sticking on. Now, it will go back to the, to the uh, background once in a while when it sees a larger subject back there. It only happens occasionally. For the most part, it does stick on the subject I want it to track. So that is an improvement over before. Now, no camera is perfect, and no matter how good the autofocusing system is, if it's Sony, if it's Canon, they will all face these issues once in a while. But this has been improved over the Z9, and I can tell you that firsthand. Also, speaking of which, you can now focus on smaller subjects and it will stick on that a lot better than before. This was something a lot of people would complain about when they're shooting on smaller subjects and they want the focusing, uh, whatever a focusing point you're using, 3D or your uh, custom uh, configuration to stick on that subject a lot better. It is now doing that. But Nikon is hearing you guys and they are addressing it with this firmware update. Another feature that they worked on, and this is an AFC mode, is continuous autofocus in terms of eye tracking and detection and sticking on the person and recognizing them a lot faster and also with animals as well. Case in point, I tried this out with my Rottweiler, which is a very tricky dog to photograph with eye tracking because black fur, dark brown eyes, and you have those that little tan patch or eyebrow patch above the eyes, which makes most autofocusing systems lock on that first because it's the brightest subject and it's more contrasty than locking onto the eye. And the Nikon Z9 does a relatively good job with this. Of course, any camera system, and I've tried this with all of them with my Rottweiler, there are times it just focuses on the eyebrow, but the one thing that I did notice with the Z9, as soon as it gets a little bit of a glint or a glare or a little bit of the white of the eye, it locks on that eyeball right away and it sticks on it relatively well. 
And you're seeing some of that happen right here as she's moving around, she's walking around here, she's sitting up and down, and I'm firing off shots here, and you're seeing that a lot of these shots are in focus. So this is an improvement from what I saw before, and this was a shooting at like 1.3 or 1.2 on the 51.2, so I was really pushing the aperture on this, and it does a very good job. Then also my partner decided to take photos of me to show you how it works with humans, and I'm walking around the screen, I'm using a wide L for this, and the autofocusing on my eyes sticks on me like glue, I can walk back, I can come forward, and it does a very good job in that. Now I'm gonna say this again, no autofocusing system is 100%. I don't care if you're the Sony Alpha 1, the R5, the R3, the R7, or whatever camera you have out there. There will be times that these autofocusing systems just fail for whatever reason. It could be lighting, could be contrast, it could just be subjects in the foreground and background, things happen. But I have to give credit, again, where credit's due, Nikon has improved the autofocusing and that is one of the big things for me that I noticed in this update. And last but not least is vibration reduction panning up and down. So some people were complaining a little bit of jitters with the vibration reduction in the camera system when you're going up and down and especially for sports and wildlife photographers or people that need or need to capture fast action subjects and need to pan, you don't want any sort of jitter or anything like that, especially if you're doing video as well. This does come in handy and this has been improved. Now, I don't have a longer lens for this review, but based on uh, what I'm hearing out there from other people that have tried this out, they're saying that it has been improved, so I'll take their word for that. And I'm sure for a lot of you out there who do have longer lenses that do need to use this uh, up and down panning, let me know in the comment section below how this update has improved that for you with the Z9. Okay, that's pretty much it for firmware 2.1 for the most part. These are some of the bigger uh, things that Nikon addressed with this update, and I have a feeling more is coming down the way. I'm excited to see what they do with this camera. I think to me, it's one of the best full hybrid camera systems on the market and it does a tremendous job and I'm really happy with the performance thus far. And yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys what you think of firmware 2.1. So with that, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell. A lot more great content is coming your way. Take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.